Hey guys, what's up? So I got a question from Rob Diaz. He said, hi Chris, I know shit about programming. I'm confused on all this language uh, programs. I need something easy to start to get my feet wet. Python is it the way to go or thanks Rob, there's some typos in there, but no, no, no problem there, Rob. Um, so a lot of you beginners have that question. Okay, which language do I start with? I know I've fucking talked about this to death. Like I know about that, but guess what? It gets clicks and uh, no, just, it, it does get clicks, but seriously, it is a, a valid beginner question, and it's not even just about the clicks. It, it literally is a legit question. It's the same questions that I kind of pondered over for the longest time. Like, so I will tell you that when I was first getting started, like I, I wanted to get into programming. I didn't know if, if CSS was a programming language or HTML. I didn't, I didn't know shit. Like, so the first thing you have to do is, is to get an interest in programming. So for me, it was it was about web development. So it was simple for me. There was a lot of stuff going on at the time. YouTube was like a relatively new thing and then being bought by Google. Uh, they were in the news, you know, the Facebook social network movie and everything. So I understood like what a website was and that the basic foundations of a website were that you have some sort of server and that you have a language that runs on that server and you have HTML and you have CSS and you have JavaScript that all run inside of the browser. Um, but a lot of people don't really understand that. So that is something um, that, you, that you have to get out of the way. Like, so, okay, so if you are trying to get into programming and you're trying to pick your, your first language and your goal is to do something with web development, then I would say Python's a great, uh, a great choice here. But before you even get into, like, you know, server-side code or anything like that, if you truly are brand new to this industry, you have to understand what JavaScript is, you have to understand what CSS is, and you have to understand, um, you know, what HTML is. So if I go ahead and all you need is a Chrome browser, you right click on something, you say inspect, and that's going to pull up your developer console. And this is actually something that web developers use day in and day out. I don't know anybody that doesn't use Chrome for their development, uh, for stepping through their JavaScript and everything else these days. Um, and they make it so much easier than it used to be. Like I right click and I look at this, this um, I hover over this. And you can see Rob Diaz's name, I'm hovered over it. On the right hand side, as, as, long, as long as you have the elements tab selected here, on the right hand side, you can see all the CSS. So I can actually click on this and I can change it any color I want. Oh look, I just changed YouTube style. How did I do that? Okay, so I'm obviously adjusting the color. What is this pound sign? It's using this, you know, this hex decimal. I'm not even sure what the hell that is. I guess it's hex decimal. Um, but it's a coloring system that browsers use. Do I have to know all the ins and outs of that? No, I don't. But I have to know that I can actually say th that this is uh, CSS and I can say color red. And you can see it's a much brighter red. Google has this ability to click a box and give you a hex decimal based on this, like, this color rainbow thing, which is very impressive. I'm sure other browsers have caught on, but Google was the first one that I saw that was doing something like that. You look at font weight. What is font weight? You can start exploring all this stuff. So you give uh, font weight, and if I say uh, bolder, then you can see that it's a, it's a much bolder font type. Um, I can give text decoration. What about underline? So this is all CSS, right? So I'm, I'm doing... All right, so now Rob Diaz is underlined. Um, so there's... There's all kinds of different things that you can do within the Chrome browser to learn about HTML and CSS. And that, that is actually where you want to start, assuming you want to get into web development. So you want to be a programmer, you want to get into web development, you start with that. And nowadays, like I said, it's so much easier than it was because you can explore around. Um, like if I were to take this, uh, this comment here and I say inspect and I look at this, and you can see all the, the styles that are affecting it and everything. And a lot of this stuff may not... Um, but if I were like display block or something and uh, maybe give it a margin, bottom, margin, bottom, like 50 pixels. Now you can see it's pushing down 50 pixels. So if I hover over it, you can see that, that pink section there is actually the margin. So that gets into the whole box model thing, which everybody needs to be aware of when you're a developer. You can actually see the box model here. Margins like the exterior. Uh, and then you have your border and padding is like the amount of uh, space on the interior could, that could actually increase elements like the actual space elements take up. So a lot th there's a lot to learn with CSS. Now, luckily, we have things like Bootstrap. We don't have to have to do so much of this stuff, but you still have to understand the basics of it as a web developer. 
Um, so I'm getting too much into the web development, but obviously all this stuff here is actual HTML, which is like the skeleton. CSS is the style. So if you have makeup, you apply makeup to your face, and you can think of CSS like that. And what is actually delivering the data? Well, it's a combination of a server-side language, which could be Python. Um, like YouTube actually still makes good use of Python from what I understand. Um, and then there's a lot of JavaScript these days. So a lot of JavaScript, you can actually write, if I clicked on console instead of element, I can actually say, uh, hello world, right into the console, and I can start running JavaScript. I can start having var x equals 1, x plus 2 equals 3. You know, So you can start doing all kinds of different coding within the browser. So if you want to be a web developer, all you need is Chrome. Start learning about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You master those three, you can get a job anywhere because that's something that a lot of people just fundamentally lack. They don't understand uh, the ins and outs of it. Then you have things that are built on top of that that make our lives uh, even more interesting, which is things like React.js. So um, those are JavaScript libraries that make data binding and UI and everything a lot more um, programming intensive. So is Python a great language to learn for web development? It actually is. Python is, is an absolutely fantastic language. Um, so the, the Django framework was built with Python, and that actually is at one point, Pinterest was using it. They ended up outgrowing it and kind of wrote their own. But um, Reddit.com uses Python. Instagram uses Python. YouTube uses Python. Um, so Python is great for a server-side stack. And it really boils down, in my opinion, there's uh, Django, uh, the Django web framework, which is a really popular option. Um, and this is what, like I said, Instagram and Pinterest were using at one point. Uh, Instagram still does, I believe. And then you have Flask, which is a much more smaller um, less uh, less intensive framework. However, it doesn't do as much as Django. So a lot of the times when you're a beginner, you need this thing to hold your hand and do as much as, um, as much for you as possible. And you need the largest community that has the most uh, questions asked on, on Stack Overflow because you're most likely going to have those same uh, same questions that, that as you go along on this, uh, this building process here. So um, yeah, Python is great for a first language. It really is because Python isn't just limited to the web. Um, you can do things with Python like basic gaming. You can build software applications that have to be installed. Um, there's things like PyQt or Py.exe, which, um, like I said, if you want to build distributable software, if you want to do web development in Python, you can do that. Um, if you want to do like robotics, like iRobot uses Python. Um, the Raspberry Pi has Python installed on it by default. So um, you want to start getting into like... Uh, like embedded systems type type things like uh, Python does that very well. So like with Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi, you can get certain things that have Wi-Fi and HDMI and like, um, and even like I said, I was thinking about building my own telescope mount with uh, the using like Python to to download astronomical data to try to just you know make like automatically rotate my uh, my Dobsonian telescope to wherever it is, you know, like with a, with a go-to, because those mounts can be like three or 4,000, but I was thinking, you know, if I buy some, you know, some basic assembly, could I build my own robot with something like the Raspberry Pi for like a fraction of the price? And hell, if I did it that good, I could even maybe distribute it uh, or distribute it, if I can say proper English, so. Uh, but th that's my thoughts, man. Like that is, uh, that is th there's a lot, that goes into, okay, I want to be a programmer, where do I start? But assuming you want to be in web development, that's where it's at, man. But if you want to be in game development, like I would suggest like C Sharp over C++, uh, C++ probably, even though there's still more opportunity for uh, C++ and, and the current market because there's still so much code that gaming engines and things use. Um, but C Sharp is, a, I would think, a much more pleasurable language to work with if you're going to get into something like gaming. Now, if you're into Java uh, or Android development, then you're going to want to do Java. If you're going to be doing any sort of Apple systems, you want to focus on Swift or Objective-C. Um, but starting out, man, I would probably think that you, you probably want to get a job in the industry, and, and most likely that's that's web. And start with uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and the web side of things, and then move on to something else. All right, guys, uh, make sure you check out my sponsor. I have two sponsors now, so they're paying the bills for me, which is nice. Uh, we have Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. They are a 12- and 16-week intensive course that focuses on technology of the here and now. It's an on-site location, so they're not teaching you online. They're, you're actually going to work with real developers, people that have been in the field. I've worked with people that actually have graduated from boot camps and also have taught at boot camps. Um, but they do things like uh, they're going to be working on Git and GitHub and, and so you can deal with uh, version control systems and 
understand how all of that stuff works. Um, in addition, we have uh, site one, two, three. So if you're trying to build your portfolio uh, or get your name out there as a developer, as a blogger, um, heck, even if you want to build a website for your, your mom's friend who owns a restaurant and you want to show their menu or something like that on uh, online and maybe even charge them a little bit of money for it, then um, site one, two, three can help you get something up and running quickly if you don't want to deal with shared host um, or dedicated servers virtual private hosts all the work that ends up uh coming along with that you can also uh, check them out the description tab below has links for both of these companies if, uh, if you guys are interested in that and thank you for watching my channel you guys take care and please subscribe bye